From the beginnings in 1896 and John Heisman's undefeated turn of the century team, through the legend of Frank Howard and the unprecedented success of the Ford era, to its future with Ken Hatfield, Clemson University football has produced some of the greatest games, players, and moments in college football history. The triumphs that comprise the Tigers' greatest games are a unique story, characterized by the undying support of her faithful that is unequaled in the land in sports' most colorful game. In 1896, three years after Clemson had opened her doors, 30 students met in the barracks to organize a football association. These rugged individuals enjoyed some success in the first couple of years, but in 1900, budding football genius John Heisman was hired to coach the team that was being called the Tigers because of their orange and purple striped jerseys and stockings. In his initial year, he directed Clemson's first undefeated season with decisive wins over Davidson, Wofford, South Carolina, Georgia, and VPI. They finished with a 35-0 route of the University of Alabama, after which the state newspaper reported, the Alabama boys were clearly outclassed. It was a case of novices against veterans. Following the 1903 season, Coach Heisman was enticed away by Georgia Tech, ending this golden age of Clemson football. Coach Jess Neely had brought Clemson football back from the gridiron wilderness and into the national spotlight. His 1939 team was his last at Clemson, but his best. They were Southern Conference champs and 8-1 going into Clemson's first ever bowl game against Eastern Power Boston College in the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day of 1940. They had an outstanding backfield led by Charlie Timmons, Chad Bryant, and Clemson's first All-American, Banks McFadden. The 175-pound senior was a great punter, passer, runner, and defensive back. He led Clemson to a 6-3 Cotton Bowl victory with the lone touchdown coming on a two-yard Timmons run. Banks McFadden also earned All-American honors in basketball and excelled in track for the Tigers. The nation's most versatile athlete's jersey, number 66, is now retired and recognized by many as the best ever at Clemson. Bowl Classic. Coach Frank Howard started the 1950 season with dim prospects for glory. Most of their opponents had completed their post-war rebuilding while the Tigers were riddled by graduation. But they had a quartet of high-powered backs that had vaulted the country gentlemen back into the top ten. They were undefeated with only a tie to a Steve Wadiak-led South Carolina team. The heroics of Fred Cohn, Jackie Calvert, and Billy Hare had them poised for a showdown with nationally ranked University of Miami in the Orange Bowl. The short one to the Clemson 28, taken by Dick Henley of Clemson in slow motion now. Watch him drive to the Clemson 36 and run smack into a host of Miami Hurricane tacklers. And the 1951 Orange Bowl Classic is underway. Sophomore sensation Billy Hare continued his passing brilliance with a 45-yard bomb to Bob Hudson. <laughs> First touchdown of the game. Fred Cohn took it in from the one. That's all he's got for the first big touchdown of the game. <laughs> Redcliffe kicking the extra point. It's good. Clemson South Miami, nothing. In the third quarter, standout Ray Matthews made a circus catch of a hair pass with two men on his back. Hare then connected with end Glenn Smith, who made one of his six catches and scrambled in for the touchdown. Who takes it for Clemson's second touchdown. Coach Frank Howard gets a pat on the back and the Clemson crowd is on fire. After a missed extra point, Clemson was up 13 to nothing. Two minutes later, Miami responded with a long kickoff return and a reverse play to close the gap to 13 7. who sails wide, wide around in for a touchdown. The Hurricanes struck again with a five-play, 95-yard scoring drive to go ahead 14 to 13. Miami players rise to their feet. The game is tied 13 to 13. Clemson bench unhappy. Coach Frank Howard worried. Miami.
Miami held Clemson in the last three plays. Clemson punts. This is one to watch closely. Cone boots a long, long... Miami star Harry Malleus had his 80-yard fourth-quarter punt return called back, and after three penalties, they were in a deep hole. Miami fans and players expressed their feelings. The Hurricanes halfback took a pitch out, but was tripped by unheralded guard Sterling Smith for a safety. The two points had given the Tigers a 15-14 lead. Thompson up for the task as they came through when Miami's final threat was shut down by a D.A. Wade interception. The Tigers completed the outstanding 1950 season undefeated with a sterling 9-0-1 record. Down in the history books as one of the Orange Bowl's most thrilling contests. The play of Billy Hare, Sterling Smith, Matthews, Cone, Calvert, all the Clemson players will be well remembered. Make this the most thrilling bowl game of 1951. The final score, Clemson 15, Miami 14. Big Thursday was no longer, but the Clemson-South Carolina rivalry was indeed still big. Now the state championship was a regular season finale and an Atlantic Coast Conference game. Few athletic events shake up the populace like this rivalry, which in 1967 was for the ACC championship. Paul Dietzel's Gamecocks had enjoyed an abrupt turnaround from a year before and were enthusiastic about being led by star fullback Warren Muir and hosting the Tigers in front of a sellout crowd at home in the capital. But Coach Howard had a big gun of his own in ACC Player of the Year, Buddy Gore. He was among the nation's rushing leaders and would break the ACC single-season rushing record, eclipsing the 1,000-yard barrier with 1,045 yards. Coach Howard was on his way to becoming the legend as he was one of four coaches to have won 150 games. He was in his 28th season and after the season would become the dean of American coaches. The Tigers had also enjoyed an abrupt turnaround from earlier in the year when they started out one and three, then won five of the next six games. Howard said it was the best team he's had at Clemson. The Tigers intercepted Carolina's Mike Fair twice in the first quarter. In the second, Buddy Gore began churning out the yardage. Jimmy Addison gave him the ball repeatedly. Jerry Arthur and Wayne Mulligan, the center of the Clemson line, laying some good blocks. A pitch to him got first down. Gore cuts back and gets his first down. He slid off the right side and into the end zone for a 10-0 halftime lead. No hole there. He slides off the line of scrimmage around the right side for the touchdown. Back to game action. Clemson went on an eight-play, 76-yard drive with Gore doing the work behind All-American Harry Oshevsky. He broke the longest run from scrimmage of the year when he ran for 43 yards. Skillful quarterback Jimmy Addison displayed his abilities with an 11-yard TD pass to make it 17-0. They were consistently throwing quarterbacks for losses. Mike Fair of South Good Carolina. defense stopped quarterback Mike Fair. Pressure on him forced incompletions and an interception by Kit Jackson. Kit Jackson is able to intercept the pass. The stalwart defense continued as all ACC -er Jimmy Cato got an interception. Handler kicks off for Clemson. Watson grabs it for South Carolina, but watch Liebertor. Hits him. The ball is jarred loose. Ronnie Duckworth grabs it out of the air. The 147-pound quarterback Addison passed complete to Phil Rogers for a first down, then fakes a handoff and runs 12 yards for a touchdown to take an impressive second consecutive ACC championship and the place in the final national poll. 147-pound quarterback Jimmy Addison and the Tigers defeat the Gamecocks 23-12 to wrap up the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Clemson traveled between the hedges in September of 77 to take on the defending SEC champ Georgia. Vince Dooley had his Bulldogs nationally ranked and well-prepared as usual. Clemson had suffered through eight losing seasons out of the last nine. They were trying to get used to new coach Charlie Pell. They had lost a close one to a tough Maryland team the week before from which the realization of their potential had emerged. 
there was a young talent on this team consisting of players who would become household names to Tiger faithful. The Bostics, Steve Fuller, Dwight Clark, Perry Tuttle, Obed O'Reary, and Lester Brown. The entire first half was scoreless on this rainy day. In the third quarter, Bulldog quarterback Jeff Pyburn was intercepted on the 15-yard line. The Tigers were stopped and forced to punt. But the Bulldogs can't handle the kick, and the Tigers recover and go to work. Junior quarterback Steve Fuller connected with Dwight Clark over the middle and down to the six-yard line. Sophomore tailback Lester Brown bangs in for their only score and a 7-0 lead. The Dogs rally for a late touchdown but fail on the two-point conversion. And Clemson holds on for a 7-6 victory. Did the Tiger fans following this game recognize that this signaled a new era of Clemson football? Charlie Fell's 77 Tigers followed up their success in Georgia, reeling off wins over Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Virginia, Duke, NC State, and Wake Forest. They tied North Carolina and nearly pulled off a memorable upset over eventual national champion Notre Dame before falling 21-17. They came into Columbia for the annual showdown with South Carolina, ranked 15th, with hopes of receiving their first bowl bid in 18 years. Jim Collins' Gamecocks were 5-5 five and, five and underdogs. It was hard hitting from the outset. Big play by Randy Scott along with Archie Reese this Pacific time. The Tigers immediately took control. Steve Fuller pitched to Warren Ratchford for 32 yards. Ratchford is knocked down by Stanford inside the South Carolina 25. Crowd on its feet. Marvin Sims used extra effort to put them in position. Two tacklers, breaking tackles inside the 10. Finally knocked down inside the five-yard line. Boyd and Sanford, the two men. Ratchford opened the scoring from the four-yard line. The next series, the Gamecocks' Ron Bass was intercepted. It set up this Obed O'Reary field goal. Again on the move, Fuller executed a play and then gave to Lester Brown for the touchdown and the stunning 17-0 halftime lead. Fuller went to the air to continue the assault. Ken Calicup went on a 52-yard jaunt, further shocking the state with a 24 to nothing lead. Then Carolina struck with Spencer Clark, who bobbles a pitch out, runs wide, and cuts in for the long 77-yard score. The Gamecocks had come back from the dead. They took control and made it 24-14 with this Steve Dorsey 11-yard TD carry. Dorsey would score another fourth-quarter touchdown, this time from the one. The two-point conversion was caught out of bounds, making it 24-20 with Clemson still ahead. This incredible comeback was not over. South Carolina held Clemson and got the ball back again. In trouble after three incompletions and on fourth and ten with under two minutes left, Ron Bass executed a gutsy call and was on the money to Philip Logan, who made an amazing catch and run for the apparent game winner. It looked like it was the end for Clemson's Cinderella season. But as if from a Hollywood script, Steve Fuller commanded a heroic rally. He connected with Rick Weddington over the middle to the Carolina 39. He then threw incomplete 
but responded with a strike to future All-Pro Dwight Clark. Dwight Clark with a reception. With less than a minute on the scoreboard, something happened that will remain indelibly etched in the hearts of Tiger fans and paralyze the still jubilant Gamecock fans. It went down as the catch. A twisting, leaping Jerry Butler immortalized himself with the unforgettable reception that gave the Tigers a shocking 31-27 win. It capped a season that propelled Clemson back into the national spotlight. It ushered in the start of a new golden era of Tiger football. And we'll be back with a final word from Columbia, williams Rice Stadium, where Clemson has won it 31-27. The next year, the outlook was positive with the return of Fuller, Butler, Clark, Jim Stuckey, and Rex Barn, along with Jeff and Joe Bossy. It was a great year as the Tigers had won eight of nine games leading up to a November 1978 battle for the ACC championship. It was number 12 Clemson visiting number 11 Maryland. The Tigers trailed most of the game, but stayed alive with staunch defense. Steve Fuller connected with Jerry Butler for a marathon 87-yard touchdown to tie the game at 14-all. Down again at 21-14, Fuller hit Dwight Clark for an 87-yarder that tied it at 21-21. Marvin Sims' tough running put the Tigers back in good position. They finally took the lead and the 28-24 win with Lester Brown's five-yard fourth-quarter touchdown. They were the new ACC champions and afterwards in the locker room received and accepted a bid to play in the Gator Bowl. Clemson went on to beat South Carolina However, afterwards lost coach Shardy Pell as he resigned to coach at Florida. The story was that of a 31-year-old offensive line coach who was the only man considered to take Clemson's now vacant head coaching position. They made Danny Ford, the former all-SEC tackle and team captain in Alabama, the youngest head coach in major college football. He inherited a 10-1 team that was ranked sixth. The opposition for the Clemson Tigers will be the Ohio State Buckeyes and this 34th Gator Bowl football game. They had never beaten a Big Ten team and were going up against the renowned Woody Hayes and his powerful Ohio State Buckeyes. The Tigers were determined to atone for the previous year's showing in the Gator Bowl loss to Pittsburgh, the worst ever. The 34th Gator Bowl game is underway. It is high. It is deep. Way back into the end zone. Clinton. On Ohio State's first possession, they moved the ball well and found themselves down on the Clemson two. It was fourth down, and Woody Hayes elected to forego a field goal and go for it. But Willie Underwood and Big Bubba Brown make the key stop. Again, the Buckeyes were driving in the first quarter and came to a fourth down attempt, but they were thwarted by the stout Tiger defense. After an OSU field goal, Clemson went on a march with Fuller running the option keeper for a first down and following with a spinning touchdown to make it 7-3. Touchdown! Arch Leister guided his Buckeyes to a touchdown with a completion over the middle and then a keeper for six yards. Leister keeps it. Steve Gibbs broke through to block the extra point, leaving Clemson down by two at 9-7. By the same token, 9-7 makes a big difference. However, they were not content to be down by two at the half as Fuller passed to Dwight Clark over the middle and then to Warren Ratchford. Fuller 
Throws it short to Ratford. Gets away. Going for the sidelines to kill the clock with 28 seconds to play. It set up a 47-yard Obatariri kick that gave Clemson a 10-9 halftime lead and the momentum. Midway through the third quarter, the Tigers put together a 19-play drive that included a pass to Perry Tuttle and Austin Carey and a Marvin Sims bruising run inside. Fuller rolled out, scrambled to the one. Got room, there he goes. Cliff Austin plunged in for the score. Watch him take off. And you can see that he finally gets in on third, just kind of a spoil. But the Buckeye quarterback Schleister would never say die as he rolled to his left and completed a 37-yarder to Hunter. He later jammed it in from the one to cut the Tiger lead to 17-13. Woody Hayes' last key decision was to go for a two-point conversion. Standout defensive tackle Jim Stuckey halted the play. And late in the fourth period, Clemson appeared to have the game in hand while moving down the field. Looking downfield, you can see the blockers come back. He stays right in there, actually throws off balance, and hits Tuttle for a first down. What a big play. Take a look here. Fuller comes back on the option play. As Fuller was trying to pitch to Ratchford, he was hit, and OSU recovered in Clemson territory. So icky. So icky. And, of course, that is a big play. OSU quarterback Arch Schleister rolled out and cut downfield to the 24. It put them within field goal range. Back down at the 24. With less than two minutes remaining, Schleister dropped back and passed, but was intercepted by second team nose guard Charlie Bauman, who returned it and was tackled in front of the Ohio State bench, though to the amazement of 72,000 fans and national TV, Coach Woody Hayes ran over and slugged the bewildered bombing in the throat. And we got a big fight going on. After a short scuffle, OSU drew consecutive unsportsmanlike penalties that sealed Clemson's biggest victory. Coach Woody Hayes was fired the next day. The Tigers completed their most successful season ever with an 11-1 win-loss record and a final number six national rank. Phi Beta Kappa Steve Fuller finished his stellar career with the MVP trophy and 10th straight win. Lester Brown became the second Tiger to go over 1,000 yards for the season. Score. Clemson Tigers 17 carrying the trophy off the field. Ohio State 15. Rookie coach Danny Ford found himself with a 1979 squad that had lost 15 starters from the Gator Bowl team, including Steve Fuller and Jerry Butler. But he did have Jeff Davis, Jim Stuckey, and Rex Varn, and he did a masterful building job. In November, the Tigers found themselves in the unfriendly confines of Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana, against one of the giants of college football. The Tigers wanted to settle the score, having lost their only other meeting two years earlier while being belittled by Irish coach Dan Devine. Now, Ariri approaching the football, high end over end kick, going to be grabbed off by Stone at the 8, out over the 10, up the near side at the 15, gets to the 20, finds a shot at the 30. 35, finally pulled down as he moves out to the 43-yard line. Mail attempts to... Devine's Irish went ahead with a first-quarter field goal. And it is good. After being denied for several plays, Vegas Ferguson went in from two yards out to put Notre Dame ahead 10 to nothing. At halftime, the score, the Irish 10, the Tigers nothing. Standing back at his 26, awaiting the snap, has it. Gets the kick away. And he the Tigers battled back in the second back half. They forced this fumble after a strong David Sims punt. Down around the 20, it is Clemson football. It's at this Obed Ariri kick that got them on the board. And 49 remaining in the third quarter. The score, Notre Dame 10, the Tigers 3. Ariri came back with another field goal from 41 yards to cut the Irish lead to 10-6. 
The Tiger defense stiffened while the offense revved up. Quarterback Billy Lott scored the only Clemson touchdown with this 26-yard misdirection option keeper. It proved to be all they needed as the defense came through with several big plays. Well, there's a lot of orange in South Bend, Indiana, and right now it's all on its feet as Billy Lott. After a final O'Reilly field goal, the Tigers enjoyed a 16-10 upset victory that was just the third time in 40 years Notre Dame seniors were beaten in their final home game. The Tigers have come into South Bend, and they have defeated the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame here this afternoon after trailing 10 to nothing at the half. The Tigers came out... To date, it may have been Clemson's biggest road victory and was a confidence boost that foreshadowed an impending national prominence for the Tigers. 1980 was a rebuilding year, having lost 11 starters, leaving them with a young, inexperienced team. But Coach Ford's surprise rebuilding job from the year before would not be an easy feat to duplicate. After displaying signs of prosperity with a 4-1 start, the Tigers had stumbled to defeat in the next four of five games. The previous week's 34-7 whipping at Maryland had them low heading into the state championship game against the 8-2 nationally ranked Gamecocks. To change their fortunes, the Tigers donned orange pants for the first time. With what would also become a Clemson hallmark in the 1980s, the Tiger defense was tenacious. They keyed on Heisman winner George Rogers and kept him out of the end zone. This time gives to Rogers, going to his left, he'll be knocked out at the 35, comes the blitz, they ride it off to Rogers, and he only gets to, and knocks Rogers down at the 15-yard line. They were engaged in a tug of war that was highlighted by two interceptions from safety Willie Underwood, his first interceptions after starting four years. With Carolina down on the Tigers' 16-yard line, Underwood picked off a Gary Harper pass intended for future pro end Willie Scott and streaked 64 yards with it before being stopped by George Rogers. Nine plays later, the evasive Homer Jordan sneaked in on fourth down to give Clemson a 13-6 lead. Touchdown, Homer Jordan on the quarterback sneak. No way you don't indicate touchdown when that ball crosses the plane. And I'll swear to you, it crossed the plane on the previous play. It crossed the plane again. Less than two minutes later, Underwood stepped in front of another Harper pass and raced 37 yards to pay dirt. tell you one thing somebody had it scouted to perfection they toyed with it all afternoon Ben Cornett the intended receiver this time and Underwood sailing by Jeff McCall rambled 15 yards to complete a 27-6 victory that shocked the Palmetto State and would change the fate of Clemson football and the Tigers a team much, much maligned many, many times throughout the course of this season. Their coach, Danny Ford, rumors all week. Danny was gone. Danny couldn't coach. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Ken. They may have saved him. There was a lot of speculation. The Georgia Bulldogs entered Death Valley in September of 1981 as defending national champions, and they had a 15-game winning streak. However, the Tigers picked up on the legacy they had begun in the previous season's finale over Carolina. They came out in all orange and with relentless defense. The Tigers had knocked off Wofford and Tulane, but were now facing a powerhouse rival that was led by the greatest tailback in the game. If they could beat the number four Herschel Walker and company, it would be the highest ranked team Clemson had ever defeated. Gets out over the 40 to the 41 and is hit there by William Devane and Jeff Davis of the Tiger defense. Has them in the eye, pitch back to Herschel Walker. Walker trying to get outside left. He turns the corner and is knocked down around the 11-yard line and fumbled the football and the Tigers recover. Backfield, Herschel gets the call. Herschel is going to be hemmed in, pulled down for a loss, back around the 15.
15-yard line. Great defensive surge by Hollis Hall and Danny Triplett that time as they hemmed Herschel Walker. Blue back to throw, under pressure, intercepted. Picked off by the Tigers with the football as Terry Kennard. Anchored by the heaviest player in school history, the 310-pound refrigerator Perry, the Tiger defense covered quarterback Buck Ballou in a sea of orange and harassed him into five interceptions. Escapes from trouble and firing into the end zone. It is intercepted in the end zone! Rob McSwain picks off the fifth Tiger interception of the afternoon. The orange crash kept Walker in check as he struggled through 27 carries and managed 111 of the dogs' 121 ground yards, but never made it to the end zone. No first down, he stopped back around the 17-yard line by Jeff Settle. Oh no. Childers with his second intercept of the year. The only touchdown of the day was set up by Tim Childers' interception. Homer Jordan then passed to a diving star wide receiver, Perry Tuttle, for an eight yard score. Touchdown, Perry Tuttle! Donald Igwe Buike converted from 39 yards out before the half. Donald Igwe Buike has hit a 39 yard field goal. And with the, Butler, the, snap the Bulldogs' only points came early in the second half on a Kevin Butler 40-yard field goal. Are the Tigers 10, Georgia 3. The deafening roar of the vocal Deaf Valley crowd inspired the spirit of defense which ended the day and Georgia's win streak with nine turnovers. Over right tackle. Fumble! After the 13-3 triumph, Clemson appeared in the National Falls. It is over here at the Valley. One of the familiar landmarks on the campus of the In addition to the Tigers' quest for a perfect season, the November 1981 game at picturesque North Carolina was historically significant. The Tar Heels at 7-1 were ranked 8th, and the undefeated Tigers came calling on a record crowd at Keenan Stadium with a number two ranking that marked the first and only meeting of two top ten ACC teams. Clemson was coming off a school and ACC record 82-point output in a shellacking of Wake Forest. Nevertheless, defense dominated from the outset. After a scoreless first quarter, North Carolina had moved deep inside Tiger territory. Fake handoff. Elkins looks to the end zone. Drew's brother, William Devane, sacked quarterback Rod Elkins and forced the Tar Heels to settle for a short field goal. Defense by Andy Heaton, number 12. William Devane, number 94, has banished. Clemson took the ensuing kickoff and mounted a 14-play, 81-yard drive. Clemson, 32, second quarter. It ended with this seven-yard touchdown carry by Jeff McCall that turned out to be the only one of the day. Toward North Carolina blocked a Dale Hatcher punt that took a chance out of the end zone, averting more damage than the two-point. And had the ball not gone out of bounds, it would have been six. This way, it's only two. Here it is again, all ten going here. Big risk situation. I don't think they would have gotten it had the snap been proper. But that's a lot of pressure. The Tigers held on to a 7-5 lead. After an Igwe Buike field goal, the Tar Heels pulled off this 21-yard tailback option pass. Great catch right here. Boom, as he hits, he thought the ball was going to come flying up. Remember, the Clemson defense has contested this year. It's going to be right now with first and goal to go on the four-yard. On first down, star tailback Kelvin Bryant was dropped five yards behind the line by All-Americans Jeff Davis and Terry Kennard. The defense had only given up two rushing touchdowns all season. They came through again as the North Carolina team settled for a field goal and being behind 10-8. to 10-8. to eight. And again, that three points looms big. Clemson held on in the fourth quarter and ended the drive with key defensive gems, such as this 10-yard sack by the refrigerator. Gets the rush, down he goes, and it is William Perry, number 66, all 295 pounds of him, who pounces on Stan Kavich, and the reason it's important is it throws them way out of chance for a field goal. 
Outstanding freshman punter Dale Hatcher came back strong with a 47-yard punt that buried North Carolina down at the two. Out of bounds. It goes out of bounds at the two-yard line. What a punt. Woo! Stopping the clock. With under a minute left, all ACC defensive tackle Jeff Bryant recovered an incomplete lateral to seal the game. They've called it that way. This game... It'll be interesting to see the replay, but I'll tell you, it was a brilliant, brilliant defensive play by the Crimson Dragons. Good reaction on their part. They smell the possibility that it might be a backward pass. With the victory, Clemson advanced into the number two position in both polls. Clemson will take a very hard-earned but highly prized victory back to Clemson. Following the thrilling victories over the Bulldogs and Tar Heels, this 1981 team of destiny found itself with a flawless record, having gone through nine other opponents, putting Clemson University football in an unprecedented position. The Tigers were 11-0, poised atop both national polls, and staring straight at a New Year's night showdown in Miami's Orange Bowl with perennial powerhouse Nebraska. A team in Nebraska coaches feel is the best at that school in a decade. Tickets are all the Big A champions boasted of their own number four ranking. Coach Tom Osborne called this the best team he's ever had, and they maintained the same visions of taking home college football's ultimate reward. As the battle for the national championship is ready to begin. Battle Igwood Week A, a Nigerian kicks off for Clemson, drives it down. Nebraska received the opening kickoff. But three plays later, William Triplett's fumble-causing hit allowed big William Devane to recover the loose ball at the Cornhusker 33-yard line. Number 94, William Devane. Homer Jordan directed a short drive that stalled at the 27-yard line. But it was enough to draw first blood as Donald Igwe Buike drilled the field goal from 41 yards out. The Tigers of Clemson, number one in the country, are first on the scoreboard, leading 3-0. The Big A champs came right back by driving 69 yards in eight plays. When they were so, they put eight men on the line of scrimmage. It culminated with this Mike Rozier tailback pass to Anthony Steeles for the 25-yard touchdown. Way beyond the secondary, simple little pitch and catch. The extra point gave Nebraska a 7-3 first quarter lead. Following an exchange of punts, the Tiger offense had good field position inside Husker territory. Grant Campbell hits it down, and a fair catch is made on the Nebraska side of the field by Billy Davis into the Orange Bowl Hall of Honor this week. Here's Homer Jordan going for the home run. Punt is going for it. Very nearly six points for Clemson. After trying to connect with Tuttle Long, they drove down to the 21 and set up a Guebuique's second field goal that made it a one-point game. Again, hits it way up in the air, and he's right on time. Donald Iguibike has put up a second field goal. A second quarter Clemson drive ended with a controversial Husker interception that initially was ruled incomplete. I'll tell you what happened with Fisher, and that is he only could see the back of Lynn Quisco. He couldn't make the call. He referred to the official on the other side of the field. He thought that Lynn Quist had the ball clean. We couldn't see a thing. Clemson recovered with excellent field position as ACC Player of the Year Jeff Davis pounced on this loose ball at the Nebraska 27. The vaunted Tiger ground attack went into action with Cliff Austin, Kevin Mack, and Homer Jordan driving the ball down to the two. He did so and picked up the first down. They can beat Nebraska tonight. The national title. Austin got them in the end zone with this toss sweep. Good offensive line play, forcing the linebackers to make the play. A quarter in pursuit. The two-point attempt went incomplete. But Clemson had grabbed the lead again. Members stand at 12 7. Clemson going for a point. Tiger fans were able to enjoy the usual dazzling Orange Bowl halftime show with a 12 7 lead. The first half stats were very even. In the second half, 
Clemson put it all together with their second possession as the Tigers engineered a 75-yard 12-play drive. It was their standard ball control attack and complimentary passing game. Fullback Jeff McCall had two tough carries that put them in position. On third and goal, Jordan found All-American to be wide receiver Perry Tuttle in the corner of the end zone for this electrifying touchdown. It not only put Clemson ahead 19-7 with the PAT, but it was a school season record-breaking eighth touchdown reception. Later in the third quarter, Billy Davis fielded this punt and bolted 47 yards with it. Moves through a crowd, turns the corner, blockers are there, look out! 40, 30, down to the 22-yard line. But the Tigers stalled at the 20. So they called on the Nigerian nightmare for the 36-yard attempt. And again, he came through with his third field goal. They've done it during the season, but they're going with equal week K throughout the game. He's put up three field goal attempts, and he has hit all. The powerful Cornhuskers were down, but still alive after this near interception by Johnny Rembert. Mauer's in a position where he has to throw the ball. You see a man six foot four, six foot five, moving like that in the secondary. Rozier's been the key man in this drive and has played well all evening long. His offensive line gives him a real good surge, allows him to get through at the point of attack. Future Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rozier led an eight-play, 69-yard drive that was highlighted by this 26-yard touchdown run by future All-Pro Roger Craig. Roger Craig, what a great play, and Craig breaks it. He's going to go in. Roger Craig is in the end zone. Despite a five-yard penalty, the Big Red offense still had the force up front with the likes of Outland Trophy winner Dave Remington to clear the way for Craig again as he breezed in from eight yards out for the two-point conversion. It was 22 to 15 with a full nine minutes left in the game. The inspired Tiger defense rose to the occasion as they held back the heralded Cornhusker attack on their final extended drive. One of these plays that was not determined by, by poor execution offensively, that was Benish, a man we hadn't seen an awful lot tonight, making a great play at a critical time. The Tiger offense proved equally impressive as they played ball control. Jeff McCall carried by seven. Handoff straight ahead in the first. They put together the clutch drive that included this 23-yard scramble by the elusive quarterback Jordan that helped consume well over five minutes. Left side of the offensive line for Clemson. For Clemson has been great all night, but this man's just been, been coming up with play after play after play. Inside John Gonzalez. And here is Homer Jordan running out the clock if he can. Down to Nebraska got the ball back. Only six seconds remained in the game as they got off a final desperation play. Andy Hedden battled away the pass to seal the 22-15 victory and reach the pinnacle of college football. Clemson wins the national championship of college football. Clemson had earned the respect it had richly deserved along with the undisputed national championship. Their impeccable 12-0 record put them atop the college football world. This afternoon from Death Valley in Clemson. The Maryland game in 1983 was spirit bliss as Tiger fans were rising above with the release of 370,000 balloons as the team ran down the hill. It was a world record that painted a spectacular picture in and above Death Valley. The Tigers were riding out NCAA probation with a point to prove as they knew they were the class of the conference. Playing the Terrapins, who were the official conference champs despite Clemson's perfect ACC season record. They were gunning for a 19th consecutive ACC win and a 20th home victory in a row. To the end zone, he'll run it out from three yards deep. They were up against another of Bobby Ross' powerhouse teams led by quarterback Boomer Esiason and boasting a number 11 national ranking. Clemson came out in their orange pants and charged up. They started with a Mike Epley screen pass to Kenny Flowers, who broke it for a long first score. Touchdown! Well, 
Still in the first quarter, all ACC tight end KD Dunn pulled an Epley 13-yard touchdown pass in. Your tight end goes in for the score. Eric Wilson had a great rush. Boomer Esiason kept Maryland in it with accurate passing, here making the score 14-7. The Tigers got two second quarter TDs by tailback Kevin Mack from six yards out and from the one yard line. They finished the half with a surprising 28 to 7 lead. The assault continued in the third quarter as Mike Epley improvised by finding Terrence Rulak after being fleshed from the pocket. Take a look at Driver. With nine minutes left in the third, Stacy Driver burst off tackle for a 14-yard score that increased the blowout to 42 to seven. And from here on, Stacy walks in. 41 points make it 42 for Clemson, seven for Maryland. 125 yards through the. Esiason tried to lead the Terps back with his immense athletic ability, rolling out and in for a score. Touchdown. This will go wise. In the fourth, Bob Pauling kicked a 33-yard field goal. Kevin Mack added to his 186-yard three-touchdown day with the final touchdown on a tackle-breaking 42-yard carry. Clemson's two-sport athlete and academic All-ACC member Mike Epley stole the spotlight from Boomer Esiason by passing for the three touchdowns to go with the Tigers' 351 rushing yards. Rulak will get the reception. Epley gets the TD pass, but it's Epley that makes the play. Expected to be mediocre after a 1-1-1 start, this 1983 team went on to win the state championship and posted a 9-1-1 record that placed them at a proud number 11 spot in the final polls. Clemson, you see part of this huge it was a nationally televised sellout crowd this September 1986 day in picturesque Athens, Georgia. The Bulldogs were the dominant team of the decade with a backfield stock full of future pros. Tim Worley, Keith Henderson, and Lars Tate. Clemson also had been ultra successful until the previous year when they had fallen to six and six. And they wanted to get back on track to national prominence. Their 18 seniors had never beaten Georgia, and the Tigers had won only once in the last 17 visits to Sanford Stadium. Near side. Across the 30s, two at his feet, finally brought down at the 36-yard line. Lars Tate opened the scoring. Sweeping touchdown, Georgia! Kenny Flowers brought the Tigers back down to the two. The hole opens up to the outside. Now what gets him away here is pure speed. Down the sideline, he turns it on. He picks up a block on the outside by number 87, Keith O'Neill Jennings. That clears the way for the sprint down the side, and he is knocked just out of bounds. He then tied the game 7 all. 23rd of his career. Watch it again, Lynn. This is his fifth carry for 67 yards on the day. There you see the leap, the hand getting down on the ground. Now playing the dog signal caller James Jackson lofted it up to Keith Henderson Jackson for the second touchdown. The Tiger defense wanted to be noticed when Delton Hall stopped a Georgia drive with this pass break. Jackson, nice looking pass, end zone incomplete. Come on, that's Rulak in motion. An ensuing Georgia interception was stripped and recovered by Ray Williams on the 11-yard line. He should have been picked off, but right here, he strips it from behind and gets it back. Rodney Williams threw to senior Terrence Flagler for his first TD pass in six games, and that put them one touchdown behind at 21-14. He did it again in the second quarter with this 20-yarder. Football this afternoon. The pressure being put on. You see the ball tipped there by Brantley. Just getting a hand. A play-action pass to tight end Jim Riggs set up the tying score.
big Tracy Johnson bowled his way in from the one. Being tipped, some remarkable plays. It's Tracy Johnson, number 42. And Clemson, one point away from once again. Time this ball came up. They started the second half of another classic Clemson-Georgia matchup, even at 21-21. Feel 82,000 here in attendance, and we're seeing one heck of a ball game. The ball tied up at 21 apiece as Clemson attempts to win their first game from the University of Georgia since the 1981 season when the Tigers won the national championship. Georgia's defense stiffened. The Tigers came out moving the ball surprisingly with crisp passing. Number 87, first grab of the day, big gainer. The air attack set up the short touchdown by quarterback Williams. And Corey, he deserves to take this one over for himself. He is calling a fine football game this afternoon. We talked about confidence being a factor. And after an exchange of turnovers, Georgia responded with a 78-yard bomb to fast Freddie Lane to retie it at 28-28. In the last quarter, Georgia was again on the move and threatening to make it a game-winning drive. Georgia inside the 40. Jackson going to put it up. And he's got John Thomas. Just have the best day anybody's had since Buck Ballou. And here's Jackson outside, inside the 20 to 17, 18. They had gone 68 yards in 12 plays. And it was first down when James Jackson fumbled and A.J. Johnson recovered inside the 10-yard line. Just as he turned up field, stuck a hand in. Clemson seized the opportunity and began a march that was helped by such clutch plays as Terrence Flagler's diving fingertip catch for key field position. Went to the air. The yardage is not big. 22 yards on this play, but it means it's a first down. Afternoon. Flagler then contributed solid runs, including a 17-yarder. Handle him. In the middle, and watch this great move to the outside. Rulak on the outside, holding up, blocking one in the mid in the secondary. Flagler, some kind of athlete. Flagler playing a bit. Rodney Williams took off insane. toward the short side with a 15 yard option Williams. keeper and stopped the clock with less than a minute in the game. yard line, Clemson moving the football. And the clock has stopped. Williams did manage to that get set up the scene again. that all Clemson fans recognize as one of the great ones. Nine Coach Ford ran the clock Six down and stopped it with four seconds. Right Calls a timeout with four seconds to go. You don't expect him to make Junior place time. kicker David Treadwell had missed badly from 39 yards earlier in the same quarter. But Ford stuck with him over kicker Rusty Side. It was a brilliant call as Treadwell put it through from 46 yards out with no time left on the clock. The reaction tells the story as Clemson won one for the ages, 31 to 28. Tigers come through. Treadwell, the 46-yard field goal as time expires, and they are leaping and going crazy. The Tigers' first win here in Athens at Sanford Stadium since 1977. There it is. You don't see it very often. The Tigers, their first victory of the year. Vince Cooley and Danny Thor congratulate one another on an outstanding football game. Unbelievable. One year later, another ranked and bowl-bound Vince Dooley team met number eight Clemson for what had become an annual confrontation of Division I-A college powers. The magnitude of this rivalry was heightened not only by the proximity of the two schools that represent the ACC and SEC, but the national implications of their outcome in front of the customary sellout crowds and the national TV cameras. This was the height of college football. It'll send shivers down your spine. The Bulldogs moved the ball but had to settle for an early field goal. It's true. The Bulldogs score first. A Terry Allen draw play set up a Tiger field goal. 
allowed Allen to pick up enough yards to put the field goal uh, kicker in much better position. 30-yard attempt by Treadwell, who beat the Bulldogs at the closing buzzer a year ago. He has tied this game. At the beginning of the second quarter, Georgia held Clemson for three plays and then struck with a 76-yard Nathaniel Lewis punt return. Oh, slick return. 45, 50. One man to beat is Sile. He gets past him. Lewis breaks free for a touchdown. The Bulldogs strike. Two minutes later, the Tigers struck with some lightning of their own as fullback Tracy Johnson ran straight ahead to tie the score at 10-10. Before the half, the Tigers had moved the ball but stalled and called on Treadwell for three points. You are right, Treadwell has either won or tied game, four games for Clemson over the last two seasons. It's Quickly before the half, the Dogs put together a drive that resulted in a field goal with just six seconds left on the clock to make it 13-13. Is there. It's Clemson 13, Georgia 13. The seesaw battle continued in the second half. Georgia held, but Tony Flack fumbled the punt. It resulted in another David Treadwell field goal. Signaled at the nine-yard line is bobbled. And Clemson has recovered. Bulldogs went 78 yards, ending with elusive tailback Rodney Hampton scoring the first touchdown of the year against the stacked Tiger defense. And gets into the end zone for the Bulldogs. Two minutes later, Rusty Siles' punt hit, bounced, was tipped and downed on the one-yard line by freshman John Johnson. Clemson defense gets down at the one-yard line. On first down, Quarterback Jackson, behind a strong line, managed to just scramble back to the line. That's Steven, 65. On second down, he rolled left. James Lott trapped him, and Gene Beasley finished it for a safety. The dog lead was cut to 2018. Beasley, 27 all over him. Turn it for Clemson. With five minutes remaining, Georgia's free kick was returned by Donnell Wolford. Out to the 42-yard line. The Tigers went back to their ground attack. Wesley McFadden went for 11 yards. Terry Allen ran off tackle for another 12 yards as the offensive line with the likes of All-American John Phillips cleared the way. Allen was close to a 100-yard day after cutting back for 16 yards that put the Tigers where they wanted to be. In position to call on the walk-on kicker from Jacksonville who didn't even play in high school. It would be deja vu for the All-American senior David Treadwell. With no timeouts left, Coach Ford ran the clock down to set up the 21-yard attempt to beat Georgia back-to-back -back for the first time since 1905 and 1906. It was Clemson's all-time pressure kicker, Mr. Clutch, coming through for the 21-20 one-point triumph. Sold out Orlando the Tigers had put together a great season in 1987 that had seen them win another ACC crime. They had achieved a top 10 ranking going into the season finale with South Carolina. But the Gamecocks were also ranked and managed to shut them down for a win that was still bothering the Tigers as they went into the Citrus Bowl game against Joe Paterno's defending national champion Nittany Lions. His teams were 12-5-1 in bowl games and succeeded with a balanced offense. Clemson came out with the look of a team ready to make amends for having suffered their second loss in 11 games. 
Wesley McFadden started them off on the right foot. Number 22, out across the 25, the 30, the 40, and he gives them excellent field position to the 44-yard line. Rodney Williams, shooting for his second bowl MVP honors, went to the air on a play action to Keith Jennings. Keith Jennings, six foot four, wide receiver, first down to the Penn State 31 yard line. He set the stage to go now for the Tigers. Tracy Johnson took it outside for a first down. The first down inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Had the defense then goes in standing for the touchdown. But they come out with a good pass, medium range downfield. Let's take a look at this play as we watch the number 42. Penn State went to the pass for a 39 yard score. Number nine, Michael Alexander goes against James Lott. James Lott is 5'9", Alexander is 6'2", and it's good for six points and a tie ball game. Oh, it's second down. The Tigers continue with their surprise air attack with Williams hitting Gary Cooper on a slant batter. Then back to Jennings off a play action, which started Treadwell warming up. Jennings is having some day. Trying to drag him down is Johnson, and he won't go down. You draw people up. But Rodney Williams ran the option to perfection as Terry Allen went 26 yards. That set up a touchdown. He's drawn up the man who is responsible for the pitch man. Once he does that, Terry Allen, number 21, is clear. It's a last-minute pitch. And, if and Tracy Johnson went in untouched for his second touchdown and a 14-7 Clemson halftime lead. to Alexander. He's got Cousy blocking ahead of him. And he's going to get just about to the 10-yard line. It'll bring up a fourth down. The field goal brought them to within four points. Eric Eats. Eats kick is on the way, and he's got it. Here it comes again. Quarterback Williams was in control of this balanced Tiger offense. He found Gary Cooper again. Then pitch to Allen to get inside the 10 yard line. Because the pressure's coming up. Great block again downfield by the wide receiver. Keith Jennings, number 87. And then Terry Allen, a few moves of his own to bring it inside the 10 yard line. Fullback Tracy Johnson took it in for his third touchdown. Johnson, his third. I told you coming into the ball game, Tracy Johnson. The junior. Small linebacker. Later in the quarter, Penn State's deep drive was thwarted when Dorian Marable, defensive player of the game, took an interception back 46 yards. It turned out to be Penn State's last real threat. Play. You see the blocking he gets downfield. The way he ran the football, he could be a fullback. Tiger fans were celebrating as it was all Clemson from then on. Terry Allen, who had a 100-yard day, sprinted through a huge hole for a score that put the lead at 28-10. The huge Tiger defense took over in the fourth quarter. Consensus All-American Donnell Wolford came up with a spectacular interception in the end zone. Airs it out. Alexander's down there, and it's intercepted. Wolford. Joe Henderson scampered for good yardage in the final 80-yard drive. This is Henderson. Look out. He's got great speed to the 20, 15, 10, and dropped at the 8. Such a long he fought his way into the end zone for the final points that were the most ever scored against the Nittany Lions in a bowl game. He could be a game breaker. The decisive 35 10 Citrus Bowl win garnered a lot of respect for Clemson football by beating a team with the national recognition of Penn State. Now, Clemson was getting the attention they had earned and were being considered as among college football's elite. And so 1988 started in a big way for the Clemson Tigers. They defeat Penn State 35 10. The 1988 season was another superlative 10-2 record with a third straight ACC championship. It was an experienced squad and the first senior class to go to four bowls. 
Danny Ford had taken his team back to the Citrus Bowl against another coaching great in college football's winningest coach, Barry Switzer. This year's opponent was an even stronger opponent, the top 10 Oklahoma Sooner juggernaut. It would be a good measure to see how far Clemson football had come. Clemson were underway. Going to be brought out by Wesley McFadden to the 20, to the 25-yard line. The Tigers had never faced the wishbone, but were handling it well with alert plays by the likes of Ed McDaniel. Excellent reaction by Ed McDaniel, number 93. The first five series ended in punts. To Milburn, this one not hit well at all. Hits at the 45, dives right there, and Clemson will down it at the 45-yard line. Late in the first quarter, quarterback Jameel Holloway directed the Sooners down to the one-yard line in a first down. Freshman LaVon Kirkland made the stop on first down. Good reaction. All the way. He's in there, and he got in. Touchdown. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. The, the swarming Tiger defense with Doug Brewster and Vance Hammond chased a scrambling Holloway all the way back to the 18-yard line. He does not give it to him. Now, we're up here looking from the back. We thought he had given it to him. He had not. Here he comes scrambling out of there. I really believe. Now, I wasn't in the huddle. I'm not sure what it was called. But the normal wishbone, you would have disengaged, give the ball right there. And it back they finished a great defensive stand, forcing an incomplete pass on third down as the Sooners settled for a field goal. Like they're playing him real loose zone. Tough to get a corner pattern in that. Good defense. For Oklahoma and on Oklahoma's first possession of the second quarter, linebacker Doug Brewster intercepted the Holloway pass. Picked up, and coming up with it is the linebacker Doug Brewster. His second interception of the year. Fullback Wesley McFadden burst up the middle for 36 yards before being dragged down at the three. But it was handed off up inside of him. Here comes Wesley McFadden, 22, making the longest yard run. Ups have only given up. A penalty on a pass to Allen prevented a touchdown, but future All-American Chris Gardaki got them on the board and a 3-3 tie game. So it's all even at three. On the final play of the first half, he gave Clemson the lead with the 46-yard field goal. That kick is good. Here, here he is, deep in the eye formation. And it he gets tucked away. Jerry Allen's first fumble of the year in the third quarter gave Oklahoma the ball. But the stalwart defense stuffed the Sooners on third and three. Their second field goal tied the game at six all. Clemson went 80 yards on the next drive in 15 plays. That ended with the game MVP, Terry Allen, pushing it in for a 13-7 lead. Get a tight look at this the dominant Clemson defense went to work here, stopping the Sooner ball carrier in the backfield. Bandit Jesse Hatcher made outstanding plays and was named defensive MVP. He recovered a low option pitch to halt another Sooner drive. Clemson fighting for it, and the Tigers have it. Again, it's Hatcher. Fourth down and ten. They're going for it here. This is for the game right now. Jamel After back. a Tiger punt, Oklahoma started off at their own 20 where the quick quarterback Holloway directed them on a drive to save the game. After converting a key fourth and ten play, he found his wide out for another first down with less than a minute remaining. Five-yard line and Oklahoma with 58 seconds. They continued to march with a short pass on the left side, then connected on another sideline pattern. Holloway again, far side, out of bounds. The OU pass offense marched them down to the 14-yard line of Clemson with 22 seconds left. First down. After a rare incompletion, the Tigers called time. Still, the intended receiver stops the clock with 12 seconds. The Clemson secondary was being put to the test. With the final seconds ticking down, Holloway scrambled and threw it away to stop the clock with four seconds remaining. With four seconds, one play. Holloway being flushed out. On the game-saving final play, freshman cornerback Dexter Davis knocked down the pass of the end zone and sealed a 13-6 victory. It turned out to be Barry Switzer's last game as the probation-bound Sooners lost for the first time to an Atlantic Coast Conference team. It completed a 10-2 season for Clemson.
complete with a final number eight UPI ranking. 1989 was a season that saw two of the winningest football programs in the nation over the last four years meet in the second week. But the Tigers were competing with the record loss of 37 lettermen, including Donnell Wolfer, Rodney Williams, tackle Jeff Nunnemacher, Mark Drag, and Jesse Hatcher. They had suffered a defeat the last year to a Florida State team that had been outplayed by a then number three Clemson, but pulled off the unforgettable 78-yard punt risky play to win. The Tigers hadn't forgotten as they came out from Tallahassee with a vengeance as Joe Henderson took the kickoff and got them on the move. At the five. Breaks it at the 45 and is finally going to be upended across the 47-yard line. Chris Morocco passed for a first down to Rodney Fletcher. First down, and it is complete inside the 40 to Rodney Fletcher. Another completion to Fletcher was good for 18 yards. Morocco gets rid of the ball before the blitz get him. That's just super offense. McFadden knew exactly when to release the block. Now, back on the ground, they got into position for Terry Allen to score from the one. Terry Allen. On the Tigers' next drive, they mixed it up. Passing again to Fletcher. Butler again caught man-to-man -man coverage, and he blows it completely. And now it's a foot race. Then with some tough running, Allen did the honors as his touchdown put them up 14 to nothing early. In the second period, Wayne Simmons came through with a 73-yard interception. That was the second longest ever for a Clemson linebacker. Coach Bobby Bowden got his team on track as tailback Dexter Carter opened their scoring with a touchdown that made it a 21-7 Tiger lead. After the kickoff, Terry Allen quieted the partisan crowd with great foot speed when he went on a 73-yard tear. At the 30, the foot race is on and he'll score. 73 yards. After FSU picked up a field goal, Clemson had a 28-10 lead, of which Danny Ford said he couldn't remember a better first half. The Seminoles came out in the second half with a balanced attack, passing, running, and reversing. Took too long. Lewis did a great job of stumbling. Their touchdown brought them closer at 28-17. Paul Moore, touchdown. Chris Morocco created a big gain on an option keeper. See? And here comes Morocco. Not a great runner, but there's no one there, and he's able to get upfield. After a fullback carry for seven yards and a look-in pass to Fletcher, they called on Chris Kardaki. His kick put them further ahead at 31-16. The Tiger defense looked good as Simmons roughed up the Knowles quarterback. Clemson then played ball control with Henderson taking a toss sweep. The backs were being led by strong up front blocking by Stacy Long and teammates. The All-American Gardaki closed the Tigers scoring with a 26 yard. Gardaki from 26. The Tiger defense rose to the occasion against this high powered FSU offense. Booming spiral. This is Buckley all the way back at the nine. Watch Buckley do his thing. It's a great cut here. And this is really classic Clemson defense. It's been this way all night. One guy back, slows him down. And the Seminoles got a super punt return from Buckley. However, they continued with the pressure on quarterback Peter Tom Willis. Ball was possibly tipped. Dexter Davis was the closest man to it. With the aid of a pass interference call, the Seminoles got another TD as quarterback Casey Weldon came on in relief to narrow the gap to 34-23. That would be the final score as the Tigers took the ensuing kickoff and ran out the clock. Chris Morocco completed 8 of 9 passing that day to go with no turnovers. Danny Ford was now 6-0 coaching in Florida, and FSU had their 10-game home win streak snapped. 
The past 11 years have seen the Tigers reach new heights that included four bowl wins and four top 20 teams in a row. Ken Hatfield came into Clemson with some huge shoes to fill. What better way to replace a past National Coach of the Year than with another one? As a player, Ken Hatfield was one of the top punt returners in college football ever for Arkansas's 1965 National Championship team, while being named Academic All-American. He had assembled an impressive 55-17-1 record as Arkansas coach. He was one of four coaches in the nation to lead his last eight teams to bowls and was coming off a 10-2 year. Gone in 91 were nine starters, including all starting receivers and backfield to comprise the youngest set of skill players since 1943. But the Clemson football tradition has fostered a winning system that has attracted the top players that replenish the graduating stars. Ronald Williams would appear and take conference rookie of the year honors. The Tigers earned an invitation to play Big Ten co-champion Illinois in the Hall of Fame Bowl while looking for a 10th victory after posting a 9-2 regular season record along with a spot in the top 20. The Fighting Illini were ranked 16th with an 8-3 record, having beaten eventual national champion Colorado. Clemson took the opening kickoff and put together a drive relying on accurate passing from Deshaun Cameron. And again, another pass for Deshaun Cameron, who is here left open. Doug Thomas has it this year. But they were stopped at the two-yard line and relied on All-American kicker Chris Gardaki in his last game to get them on the board. 19-yard attempt, a chip shot, and the Clemson Tigers have the lead. Illinois fumbled on their first play from scrimmage to John Johnson. On the next play, Cameron caught the Illini off guard by passing to senior Doug Thomas to give him his first TD in his last game and Clemson's first TD pass in four bowl games. The Tigers stayed in the air with passes for key yardage to Thomas again and then to a wide-open Howard Hall for a 17-0 lead. The best defense in the nation took the spotlight after All-American LaVon Kirkland put a hit on Illinois quarterback Jay Verduzzo. He was still woozy and was picked off by senior Arlington Nunn, who went 34 yards with his third interception return for a touchdown of the season. It was a shocking 24-0 at the half. Star tailback Howard Griffith ran into the best defense in the land. And quarterback Verduzzo was intercepted again when Kirkland tipped his throw and Chuck O'Brien came up with the ball. The hustling Tiger defense put constant pressure on the quarterback. They bottled up tailback Griffith, stopping him short of the first down. Linebacker Doug Brewster blocked the Illini punt. With all-conference standout Stacy Long, Eric Harmon, and Jeb Flesh up front, there was superb blocking, such as on this screen pass to Rodney Blunt from substitute quarterback Richard Moncrief. Deshaun Cameron, who kept improving throughout the year, was running the option well and set up the final score. Another three-pointer from the kicker, who became the only other player, along with Arkansas' Steve Little in 77 in NCAA history, to finish in the top five nationally in both punting and place kicking. It was 30 to nothing as the Tiger defense wreaked havoc with sacks such as John Johnson's. The final Illini threat went down inside the Tiger 10-yard line, but ended when linebacker Ed McDaniel recovered their fumble. The win capped a 10-2 season for the number nine Tiger. It was an ACC record 40th victory for the senior class and Clemson's fifth straight bowl victory. Illinois coach John Makovich, who had coached 22 years earlier with his friend Ken Hatfield, left the field a victim of a record bowl margin victory for Clemson. It was the first shutout in the Hall of Fame bowl history. It was an impressive debut for Ken Hatfield, who was the first rookie coach of Clemson to win 10 games and the only ACC coach to lead a team into the top 10 final rankings in his first year. Coach Ken Hatfield leaves no doubt that his leadership will continue to perpetuate Clemson's prestige and status among the elite of college football.
Tiger football is the passion of the people of Clemson who have cherished these classic confrontations which live in the memories of the loyal and make Clemson football what it has been and is today.